this is the second session on the XML report and what is the approach we are following today is like uh, using PL SQL or PL SQL procedure will be generating XML and then what we do is we'll call the template using a method called add layout okay that's a seeded API which Oracle provides for the purpose of calling the template at runtime okay and generally this approach is also followed you know like uh, we are not in in real time you'll find lot number of approaches it all depends upon the requirement or your data source you know we can't say we can't say that no this is the approach we have to follow every time it's not it's nothing like that mm. it all depends upon the requirement and if you see oracle seeded programs also you'll find different number of combinations so you know we have to be very careful when you are when you say any point saying that okay this is not working because of this reason we always need to validate what is the source and how it is calling the template and all those things okay, okay. Yeah. yeah let's start then <sighs> Okay, combination two data model generation using PL SQL logic generate XML and then template design using RTF file. Okay, now here we are saying that like a data model, nothing but XML will be generated by the PL SQL program. So the concentration is first on designing the XML content. Okay, so how do we generate the XML content that we have to consider now? So yeah, so let's first of all design the query now, you know, like when you want to design XML You have to know which column you want to show and from which table nothing but the simple thing is SQL query So in the data model first of all identify your SQL query. So the SQL query will get identified based on your requirement Based on your requirement. Yes design your SQL query. So let's go to SQL developer first So what shall we do? Maybe today GL ledgers, GL set of books, HR operating units, MTL systems. Okay. We worked on this one, right? Inventory already or? Item inventory. We have. I think we have worked. Yeah, we will do it. Okay. Let's. Yeah. So first of all, we'll just try to display some items. This is item okay. major table. And what we do is we'll try to display. MSIB inventory item ID. MSIB segment one. MSIB item underscore description yeah. okay yeah msib mm -hmm. item underscore description right yes. it is just description okay yeah item description yeah one is equal to one and around them less than 51 now we'll try to yeah. display organization code also Org organization underscore definitions OD OD organization. Just a minute. Just a few seconds. Yeah. <clears throat> organization. Organization. Yeah. Organization code. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so this is our query and uh, we just have around how many columns? I think one. We just have one, two, three, four, four columns. That's it. Let it be. Now this is our data model and then which one we have to design now our SQL query is done, right? So when you are going with this combination mm -hmm. two approach, well, right here, PL SQL plus RTF. SQL query is yes. designed. Next thing is design the PL SQL API nothing but package processor to generate XML this is a second yes, this is, now let yes. us design the specification and package body so better you know generally when you go with any requirement 
it is always best to design a package and procedure kind of thing rather than just a single procedure okay yes yes because Absolutely. what happens is when you when you design something generally the functionalities get changed or you want to add up some more functionality it may get some bugs and all those things so better always have a package kind of thing so that you know you can always create a new function in that new pack new procedure in that yes okay yes yes equal rip underscore utils same way dot sql okay now create or replace package and don't use or replace at the first time if you are working a given pro first let us say if you got assigned to some project the first time you're working on something always validate whether mm. your object is already available or not if you accidentally replace something it's gone yes yes okay. and if you are not yeah. let us say you we, they have given some task and you are not sure what is the naming convention you have to follow so better just follow yeah. something xx followed by you know your name or something like that and later stage you replace the name okay okay yes <clears throat> procedure uh, what we do is generate xml this is the first procedure we want to use it okay this is my package spec yeah then next thing is package body create or replace package body now write the logic for the package body uh, sorry procedure procedure okay it's created the body you are right okay now first of all compile spec right compiled and you can yes. compile the package compiled. body it got compiled right no issues yes now the thing is f9 right yeah f9 f9 f5 control enter lot number of shortcuts will come across yes yes okay f5 f9 control enter and this is our yeah. query so take the query we'll just use mm -hmm. the cursor approach okay either way for loop also you can use it but cursor c underscore data is this our query okay this is my mm -hmm. cursor so for record in loop End loop. Now the basic thing is how do we generate the XML, right? So before mm. we write any logic, observe the content what we have generated yesterday. Observe the XML content which we generated yesterday. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> so here, okay. I'll just close the Isaacs. What is the first tag? Question mark XML, XML version value. is equal to all those things, right? And after that, if you yes. see, this is generally your report name. This is yes. followed by list, followed by yes. list, followed by yes. a group for each record. So for each record, you'll have a group. Okay. Yes. So the logic is very simple. So the XML, the XML data, data structure, I can say data structure is as follows. The first thing is your X, okay. top level XML tag. Okay. Then followed by hmm. your report name, followed by your list right list nothing but we generally call it as row set set of rows right that's why we call it row set then followed by row, set. row. then followed by <clears throat> each column column one column two so on yes so in xml for every opening tag you should have a closing tag nothing but now let us say for each row i need to close like this okay okay so a row set will have so what does a row set will have? A row set will have a n number of rows like this, like this. And then finally you'll close your row set tag now. In in row set we have n number of columns also, right? Obvious, yes. That column one to column yeah. n, right? Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, got it. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. Then we have been closed to row set also. Row set, and then yeah. you have to close everything. Whenever you open, you have to have a, some. You have to close that. Simple. For every opening yes, tag, yes. you should have a closed tag. So yes. this is how the XML data generation should be. And here, when we generally generate the XML data, this top level XML tag and this report name tag is not mandatory. You can just have row set and row tag. That should be fine. So what I'm saying okay. is, now here this XML tag mm -hmm. is there, right? 
we yes. are using our PL SQL API. This is not mandatory. You need to generate. We can ignore this. And here also this, okay. this also we can ignore. What is the thing which we require is we have to make sure that you require to have a row set and followed by row tag. These two tags is mandatory. A row set and row tag. Okay. Yeah. So now what we do is in our case, let us design. Let us consider what is what will be our row set tag. So let us say, or we can just go with the same same name, row set and row. So it will be easy to remember okay. also. Now what I will do is, so. So this loop will get iterated for each and every row, right? And now what yes. we have to do, we have to generate the content in the output FND file. Put underscore line. FND file dot output. And what we have to do, we need to generate. Row. Like row. this. And the same yeah. way for this opening, you need to have a closing also. So in middle, okay. in middle, you need to generate all the columns, whatever the columns you want to have. And before the loop, what you need to have? Before the loop, you need to have row set. Row set. And after the loop, you just need to have closing row, row set. set. Closing, closing row set. Yes. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Closing row set. Okay. In the same way, we can just take <laughs> columns now. What we do? Yeah, we are. Yeah, we have to copy. And uh, yeah. In SQL query, how many columns we have been fetched? That many row we have to take. Yes. Right. So record dot yeah. segment one. One. And okay. I'll just say item number tag. Sorry. Hmm. That's my yeah. item number tag like this. That's it. So the same way we can follow all the other things also. So let's we'll just take the Two, three, and four. Right? Okay. Hmm. So, what are where are they? Item number is, segment is done. Description inventory item ID. Okay. Description. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> item ID. Yeah. ID. Inventory item ID. Hmm. Or code. Organization code. Okay. Right? Oh, yeah. Now to just to validate whether you know you can print the logs also. Let us say we can just write some logs. Why we will write the log? How do you know? Like, let us say in the real time, if you get some exceptions, how do you know that where your program got stopped? That's the purpose, right? Okay. Debugging purpose. Debugging purpose. Yes. Your log file. Okay. Yes, log yes. Logging is very much important. So put underscore file. It's wrong. Line number 20. Put underscore line, right? Oh, everywhere I write like this. Yeah. Put underscore line. Replace with put underscore line. Okay. Done. Okay. Compile. Yeah. Compile. Now what's next? <coughs> so we have used SQL. The I mean we designed SQL query. We have done the PL SQL API. Then register the PL SQL procedure. Okay. Yes. Now let's yeah. open the instance. Application developer, concurrent executable. Hmm. Okay. Now this is my package name. And this Not is my procedure name. Yeah. I'll just say. What was I? It's item report, right? PLS equal item report. Yeah. Now here, application name doesn't matter. Whatever the application name, it doesn't matter because we doesn't need to move the file anywhere, right? It's a stored yeah. procedure. By default, we generally create procedures in the app schema. Yes. So it doesn't matter which application you mention here. Save it. 
now create a concurrent program right and here output also doesn't matter even whether you keep okay. text or xml doesn't matter okay xxif else equal now just make sure that you write the appropriate content name generate xml <clears throat> yes now request group for signing assign to the request group <clears throat> One minute, it's got struck. Yeah, same thing happened when I was logging. Mm -hmm. One minute. It's okay now, I guess. Okay, let's submit it now. It got some error. Let us see what is that. Check the log. Wrong number of type of arguments. Generate file XML. So do you know? Do you remember? Are you aware? What is what are we missing here? First thing is our report is not having any parameters, right? As per the query which we designed, there was no parameters. But here yes. it is giving some error saying that wrong number of arguments. So the basic yes. thing is when you are when you are creating any PLC call API for the purpose of concurrent program, it should have two parameters: mm -hmm. error buff and written code. Yes. Okay. This, yes, error buff. And to show the error and red code. Yeah. You just need to have these two things. Yes. That's error. Now we Com have to compile. Compile the spec. Compile the body. <clears throat> So the reason why you require is generally, you know, see like uh, this is a predefined software program, right? So it may consider internally for some purpose. That's the reason it requires all these things to maintain the status of a particular program. They just require those things. Yes. I think still you'll get an error this time because they should be out why? parameters. They should be out parameters, right? Out it, got, it got completed actually, but let's see. Okay, even though we yeah. just defined two parameters, it just worked. Okay. Now can you then see here? If, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Out parameter like we have to define there in the pro in the procedure, right? Actually, this parameter should be out. The mode, the parameter mode should be out, like this. Out. Okay. 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 But still, it worked. Yeah. It's fine. Or we can just check it again, because generally in the real time, we may just need to follow the standard logic. Yes. Compile. Compile. Body. Yeah. 
Okay, got completed. Check the output also. Now, what's the next thing? Our data model is done. Next thing is we have to design a template. But this content, what you're seeing, it's not, I mean, it seems like XML, but if you see the content, when you just save the file as something, it's not actually XML content, right? It just shows a file extension as dot text file. But what you do is, yeah. I'll just save as, okay, save as, I'll just say Excel PL SQL underscore rip dot XML. I will save it as XML dot XML file. And other thing is always when you generate XML file like this using this kind of fashion, what you do is open your browser. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just open your XML file from the browser to just validate your XML is a well defined or not. What do you mean by well defined? So can you yes. see now you got like some error here? It's giving yes. some error. So it means that if your XML is not well defined, nothing but for every opening tag, if you don't have the closing tag, then you'll kind you'll get some kind of parsing error. Can you see parsing error? Yes. Line number one, column sixty-two. So let's see what is the thing we are missing here. Oh. Line. Okay, okay. Okay. It's not because of that. Actually, the thing is, generally when you save the file like this, sometimes, you know, can you see for every what you say, LT means less than. GT means greater than. So actually, you know, it just yeah. converted again. What you do is open the output again, copy content mm -hmm. like this. Control C, Control A, Control C, and create a file with this content. Can you see? Uh, okay. Dot XML. You have to save it. Yeah. Dot XML. File so file. rather than rather yeah. than on web page save as, we have to copy uh, and we have right. to right, right. That's okay. Correct. Now refresh. Perfect. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Now our XML is valid. Okay, most probably a partial kind of thing is correct. Now the next thing is design our template. Okay, open Par the partial. Not partially. Like this, it is fully valid, mm. but but I'm just saying. Okay. So will if 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 any real time requirement we are working, hmm. this kind of XML can be validated. Like we can work on this. XML this is how we do it. This is how we do it. Whatever whatever I'm telling it's it's all my experience. Which I'm working in the project. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> it's not just. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just. I just want to tell you. It's not just training kind of thing. Whatever I'm telling. Yeah. This is this is what we follow in the real time also. Maybe instead of, instead of row set, you just follow your group name if you want to mention. Let us say if you're having multiple groups in your given in your given PL SQL API, then it may have a confusion, yeah. right? Mention that like a sales yeah. header, sales lines, yeah. like that. Now okay. here we, here in the, instead of row set, we can mention item. You can mention you know like inventory data. Inventory. Now I can mention, right? Yeah, yeah, you can change anything here. It's a, it's, it's a okay. user defined. It's a user defined developer defined tags, right? So whatever you define, yes. according to that, you need to design the template because template will identify your data based on your XML tags. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Generally, this doesn't matter. <clears throat> Generally, you know, like if you are having a single group, you can simply go with row set and row. That's it. You will not have any okay. confusion at all. Or if yes. some developers, you know, some leads will not. Listen to us, right? They say that they say we need to follow them. So better follow them. Simple. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> this particular three steps are done in the data model logic. Now design the template. Design the template. Okay. So save it. XXIFPL SQL rip. RTF. Yeah, now insert header and In inventory item details. Okay. Now then, see in my system actually doesn't show the plugin by default so i always need to enable it manually this is one of the general issue in old ms words but in the latest ms words you'll not find this issue yes add in load xml data 
upload the XML data, you should not get any issue. If you get an issue, it means that your XML data is wrong. That's the reason what we have done. We have validated our, validated our XML content using browser initially itself. That's the reason. Yes. Means it tabular form wizard. Now we can go with the table approach. Click on next. Now here, if you object, can you see row set slash row? Yes. So this is what it identifies. We just had only single grouping. So the mm. group name is row set and each record is having something called row. If you're in a, if a in a given row set also you can have multiple groups that we'll discuss later. But as of now, we just have a single grouping row set slash row. Okay. 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 Select all the fields next. No grouping. Next and finish. That's it. Remaining part is mm. almost similar. Little bit different, but almost similar to the earlier one. <coughs> And also this colorings you have to follow according to your requirement. I mean to say like some clients will have a predefined labeling stuff. Nothing but you know, like a, if you consider Airtel, they just follow red, right? And if you consider SBI, yes. they just follow blue. So each company yes. will have, each organization will have their own predefined colors to be followed in a given stuff. Now like, a, yes. let us say if it is a legal, if it is a legal paper, it should be size something. And if it is a, just an internal business scenarios, if the size should be something, even any organization also will find the same thing. Like, let us say, uh, if you consider any organization, TCS, let's say TCS, if you see for an employee, mm -hmm. let us say you want to mention that you are employee of TCS. If you want to provide some letter of authorization to some other companies, you just need to follow a particular font, particular color and particular logo. Okay. So that's how the reports, what we design will always have a, a particular impact. And we also need to consider which logo, which font need to be considered. Okay. Okay. It may not be there mm -hmm. for every organization, but some organization will strictly follow these kind of things, not to get into any legal issues or maybe like they want to maintain some standards, right? Yes. Yes. That's the reason. <clears throat> Okay, something like a small. <laughs> copyright. Okay. Yeah. Inventory item details. Now what's next? I just need to register, right? Yes. Okay. Here comes the important part. Go to data definition. XML publisher <coughs> administrator click on data definition click on create data definition Now here we remember last time that this data definition code should match with your concurrent program short code, right? But when you are designing a PL SQL based RTF kind of combination this short code doesn't need to get matched with anything You can simply ignore that you can have any name here Yes okay. <coughs> Yes, yes uh, now I'll just say Something. I'll just I can just have any name here, okay? Yeah, yeah. But how does your PLC program identify this one? It will not identify. That's the reason we need to call the add layout procedure manually. Okay. Click on apply. Oh, yeah. Data okay. definition got created. Next thing is click on templates. Mm -hmm. Click on create template. Select data definition. Now I'll just say TMPL. Application object library. PDF. Now upload your template. Okay. Apply. Okay. Now you just try to rerun the report and see whether you find any difference or not. Okay. Let's try to rerun the report now. Or better, I'll just select manually. Right. Is it calling the layout? No. So it means that we know that it is not calling our layout. Yes. And even when you click on submit, you'll still see the same XML data. You will not find any difference. Yes. Yes. Okay. So it is just a solution as of now. Yes. Even though we have defined our template, even though we have registered it. Now the basic thing is your PL SQL program is not identifying what is your template because it doesn't know. 
this our log actually okay can you see the log yeah. enter yeah. generate procedure exit generate procedure yes and now see the output still the xml yeah now what we have XML to do is, yeah now what is the mm -hmm. next step is so once you design the data model we have done this and the template we have done this but there is extra logic required in the data model we require one more extra procedure now when you okay. require PL SQL API to invoke template this is what we require now we require another procedure to invoke the template okay okay yes now what we do is there are again different different number of ways developers do the logic now what we do is hmm. let us say in the spec I'll just create okay I'll just create one more procedure this is called main or maybe I can just say generate hmm. report I'll just say in the name yeah, as generate. generate report now if it is having okay. parameter mention the parameter as of now we don't have any parameters so I'm ignoring it okay okay later we can we'll try to modify as of now let us let us say ignore the parameters now generate okay. report generate report and now now okay let's compile the spec first now the generate report what we have to do first of all in the generate report after generating the xml content to the output after generating the xml content to the output we need to call the add layout so then what will happen is okay. your xml content is available on the concurrent program output and if you call the add mm -hmm. layout what happens is this output will get applied to the template and then you'll get the appropriate output okay okay now what i will do is already we have a logic to generate the content on the output right we already defined that hmm. so what i will do is i'll just simply hmm. call that is begin and so that requires two out parameters right so i'll just temporarily declare two out parameters or maybe hmm. what we can do is actually this generate xml why i have defined because to just understand actually this is not required i mean to say hmm. it doesn't require two procedures Okay. So what I can do is, what are the logic which we have defined in the generate procedure? I'll simply copy here. Okay. Okay. You'll find lot number of logics here. Okay. Hmm. Now, I'll just simply paste here. In the general re generate report. Yeah. And generate. It's generate report. Same okay. logic. I just copy pasted here. Okay. And okay. generate report. That can be done. In Okay. Just observe here. If there miss anything, is yeah, is that's it. Doesn't make any confusion. For whom? For developer or like for us only? Why? Developer. Yeah, where, 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 where do you feel? Same, same. We are. If you if you copy. No, first thing is yeah, call that it. I understand. So the thing is, generate XML is not required now. So what I see when you are designing a solution, what we do? To just understand easily, we just need to go with dividing, dividing and uh, explaining, right? So that's the reason I'm going okay. with all this lengthy kind of process. If I just tell you the direct okay. fourth step, you'll not understand what is happening, right? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. okay. that's the reason. We'll understand. We'll see. I'll try to clarify that. But as of now, what you do is that is the reason. What you can do is instead of let like as what you said is a correct point because if you have same logic available twice. Generally, like let us if you get modify, if you require to do some modify, you're not sure where to modify. You'll find a lot number of confusion there. So what you can do is, if you find that kind of scenario, so whatever we have defined here, instead of redefining here, simply call that particular method. You just simply call the method. What I can do is the other way. Let us I'll just delete this one. Okay, is begin. I simply call that generate generate XML. Okay. And make sure that you need to pass the parameter. So I can just declare some temp temporary parameters. L error buff varchar because that is out parameters, right? Hmm. L red code. Okay. We are calling the procedure directly. We are not invoking concurrent program. Understand here, okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm calling the procedure. This yeah, one. Yeah, you're calling the procedure. This is one of the easiest way. Yeah. Call that's it. Compile. This is again a very simple, but when you register now, what you have to do, you need to register this particular generate report method now, right? Yes. Okay. Let's do this and then we'll consider the logic of the remaining part. Okay.
that generate report procedure. <clears throat> Okay. Generate report. <clears throat> yeah. One minute. Okay. Oh, why? What up? Acha, I'm still in this one, I guess. I'm yeah, in the front Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. Still, there is no layout, right? It's not calling the layout. Yes. So now what we get is still the XML, same content which we got just now. The same yes. XML content it has to generate. Okay. Just see the output. Yes. Same XML output. Yeah, XML. No difference. Okay. Yeah, so now what are we missing is the add layout functionality. We just need to call the add layout function explicitly. Okay, so let mm -hmm. me Okay One minute, so let me tell you what are we doing here? The first thing is we are calling the we are calling the XML content which is which is getting which got generated, right? Which got already generated, but as per this logic As per this logic what we have to do is before generating your XML you need to call the layout now here if you follow this logic what will happen we are generating XML before you calling the layout yes okay let me write here so here as per the add layout logic we just need to call the layout then call the XML but if you call the XML already and then if we call the layout this will not work in this scenario okay okay so we just need to follow this approach here okay what we have to do is here if you observe so i'll just comment this existing one okay existing generate xml and then mm -hmm. fnd can you see set options fnd request dot set options and you just need to mention mm -hmm. all these particular options here and then call the layout call the layout fnd request dot add layout Okay, now what is our program name? Data definition, data definition code. This is nothing but your template code. TMPL. Yes. So template short code. This one. Okay. Okay. XML data definition code name. Sorry, this is data definition code name. Okay. Mention the data definition okay. code name. Underscore DD. Right. Yeah. And the remaining are same. The remaining are same. <coughs> yeah, yeah, we have not mentioned territory. So we have to mention null, right? Yeah, if you don't US. mention territory, yeah, we have to mention null or zero zero, right? Okay. None, I think null I have used. I didn't use any time zero. Okay. Fine. You can we you can yeah. use zero zero also. Yeah, in the busting report we have to use like that. When you design busting data template, we generally follow that zero zero logic. Okay, okay. 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 Now the next thing is yeah. So now what we, what are we doing is we are calling the layout, okay. We are calling the add layout functionality then explicitly we are calling the generate xml procedure now explicitly we are calling the mm -hmm. generate xml procedure now so a little bit okay. yeah what i told is a little bit wrong but yeah let me clarify that the first one this was our first one right pl sql generate yeah. xml so this one we are calling explicitly now okay okay i'll explain again but let us finish this and uh, we, are, we are not having any parameters so i'll just ignore this and then wait for request and yeah that's it okay good compile let's try now i'll explain again but let's finish this one then generate report submit so this has to submit another request now
And can you see it got generated right next one yeah. it is calling XML generate XML. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, we got some error warning. Let's see. Maybe that you know like uh, the the one which we mentioned right zero zero kind of null. Maybe that's where it yeah. got issue. I guess. Let's see the log. Uh -huh. Beginning post processing request on node GL at this one post processing request failed with the error details. One or more fraud failed. Consult the OP service. Not printing the output. So. Is because of that. Mm, yeah. Template territory. Okay, maybe this I should mention template name. Let's try this one. Okay, could be like that. TMPL language I mentioned EN. That's correct. Let me try with TMPL template code rather than the data definition code. Let me try with the template code. It should be template code actually. I guess. Yeah. Else equal generate report. Let's try. Perfect. Got it. Yeah. Template code only we have to mention. Yes, template code. So better that's the reason. That's the reason what you do is always have a different name for your data definition template. So that you know like uh, you'll you'll you know like what happens is now if you would, if I would have mentioned same name, then you will not be sure that whether you have to mention data definition code or template code here. Even, even I feel much confusion. That's the reason what I follow is have a different name. Then only you'll get a clarity on your system. Yes, yes. Got it. So the logic what you have to yeah, do is. Yeah. The logic what you have to follow is now first of all design SQL query generate XML then register that processor and then write another processor to invoke the to invoke the first concurrent yeah. program generate XML concurrent program sorry first add layout and then generate XML program yeah okay so one, one more thing what you follow is here by just seeing this name, you know, like uh, the developers may, the business users may feel some confusion, right? Like just seeing this name, generate XML, may not be a proper one. What you do is, yeah, for this one, generate report. Mm. Maybe just say that, like, uh, so here, PL SQL instead of generate report. <clears throat> Maybe yeah, we just need to follow some name. I am not really unable to recollect. But you understood the logic, right? Yeah, once we will go through that procedure. What yeah, I'll, I, yeah, I'll tell that. So now the basic thing is, yeah, let us see what we have done the, what we have written in the main main method, okay? So in the main yeah, method, sorry, in the gen in the generate report method, sorry. So in the generate report mm -hmm. method, what we have done is, so as per the add layout logic, first of all, you need to call the add layout, okay? And then whenever you invoke any concurrent program, so what will happen is this add layout will get applied to that. So you will you need to call your add layout before invoking the concurrent program. Hello. Can you hear me? Voice is breaking. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I can hear. You. Yeah. What I'm saying yeah, is, I can hear you. yeah. Uh, let me repeat. So what I'm saying is, in the in the in this particular PL SQL based approach, first of all we have to call hmm. our add layout. Then we need to call our. Then we need to call another concurrent program which is generating the XML. Okay. So this layout will get applied on the. XML. This layout will get applied on the XML data. This is quite opposite to the normal approach. If you observe, layout yes. generally, you know what I've been telling is XML will get applied on the layout. But here it is quite opposite. Yeah. In the PL SQL based yes. approach. But in the RDF based approach, yeah. what was happening here? In the RDF based approach, our XML data XML is getting plus. applied at the layer for this template at runtime. Yeah. Yes. Quite opposite, right? So for the PL SQL, yeah. it is a little bit different. First of all, what we are doing is we just need to call like this. We just need to call this this is standard logic. Set option. 
and then we need to call add layout so you need to mention your template name template code your language territory all those things and what is the next step we need to invoke the generate xml procedure now fnd request dot submit api mm -hmm. okay if once you call that one what you do is you need to make sure that you need to perform commit and also need to wait for the request make sure that you okay. call these two things you, if you don't mention this one it will not work and even if you miss commit it will not work okay okay hmm. add layout and submit request got it yeah and if your program is having any parameters now as of now our program was so easy because we don't have any parameters yes right so generally in the real time you will not find that much easy thing easy thing what we can yeah. do is let us say let us consider organization as a parameter i'll just try to what we do is we'll try we'll try to make it some little bit complicated we'll try to consider mm -hmm. organization organization as a parameter okay we have uh, shall we have a grouping also in this yeah of course you can have the grouping stuff now let us say yeah yeah, yeah what you can do is mm -hmm. if you want to group by uh, mm. okay so if you want to group by your xml data should be generated in that fashion yes that is the most okay important. one more important thing what you do yeah. is when you when you're trying to group by don't try to perform group by in your xml data level perform grouping at your template level that's a quite easy i'll show you now Okay. See now let us say okay, okay. our our you know like we just want to design an inventory inventory report which should display item data according to the organization. What I can do rather than performing grouping at the XML level, I'll just perform the grouping at template level. It's quite easy. Okay, yeah, why? Because we have if we are performing in PL SQL, then we have to write all the stuff for grouping. It's, it's very difficult. It's unnecessary stuff. Now what I can do is insert. Yeah. Yeah. Table wizard. I'll try to perform group by at the organization level let's see that okay same thing everything is same mm. i'll just simply mention mm. a group by i just want to group by at organization code level that's it group above or group uh, left. yeah uh, like uh, we are going through wizard uh, yeah. how is it possible when we are making manual layout why do you want to go with manual layout nobody will design manual layout in real time yeah obvious what are you following is a real time boss it real time uh -huh. also everyone will uh -huh. go with a wizard only why why do you want to write xml tags manually i'll okay. tell you i'll see in real time in which scenarios will come across is when you want to write conditions then you have to write your xml code manually because it doesn't this particular tool doesn't provide any conditions directly like that yes we need to write xdo okay. functions i mean to say that's a that's the last topic xdo functions now let okay. us say if organization is 204 i want to show them in red color if amount is less than 100 i want to show in red color if it is greater than 100 some color if the value is yes. if, the, if a supplier is from chicago you want to show some other color right then those are all xdo yes. function logic so xdo function okay. logic nothing is available here oh. remaining is simple okay. simply tool based wizard based okay okay yeah group by we have to mention this particular right okay that's it yeah got it simple yeah so you can just see the preview and uh, yeah html yes that's it so now it will group by the data based on your organization where is it yeah q1 i think it is having only one org that's the reason it is showing q1 only what are the query which you have written is having only single grouping okay single <laughs> i meant yes. to say maybe it would have it would have fetched the data from the first right so it's a dynamic content how it fetches right yeah now yeah so where are we okay if you want to add up the parameter what we can do is yeah. very mm -hmm. simple so the first thing is what are we doing here we need to add the parameter at two places right now let us say yes. i want to yeah one is at the generate xml level as well as generate report level also because we are also calling the generate xml as a parameter based yes okay so this we have to remember i'll just say p it doesn't matter whether you mention it as a code uh, organization as a number or a varchar okay it all depends upon how do you pass it if you pass the organization code make sure that you mention it as varchar if you are passing it as yes. an id this doesn't matter now let us say yeah. i'll just go with varchar or code as varchar i'll pass the organization code directly okay either way you just need to follow some approach yeah 
a two place I'm adding here for the first procedure and second procedure also. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And now here also I'll add up. Why? Because while calling the program, I need to pass the parameter, right? That's the reason I required this. And here I just need to add up the logic in the query. Hmm. Again, now make sure that you whether you pass the organization code or ID. Let us I'll pass organization code directly. Okay, I'll just mention organization code. Okay, as a parameter. As a parameter. The query. Hmm. Now one more thing is while calling the submit request API. FND request submit request. So here you need to mention the parameter. Yes. Okay. Compile the spec. Compile the body. Right. Now yes. for yes. both the procedures, add up the parameter. Yes. Generate XML, XML report parameter. XML. Now I'll just go with the 10. Care. Okay, 10 care is fine actually. It doesn't have any token <laughs> stuff here. Okay. Yes. And here also we can have a value sets, right? Our own mm. value sets. Yeah, yeah, same logic, same thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now try to run the report yeah. now. Generate report. Yeah, right. Our code. Now we can see what our codes we have. Okay. Somebody actually this organization ID two zero four is V one, but some guys have changed it to O one. Okay. Oh. Yeah. V one basically yeah. for operations it will be V one only. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's training instance, right? They just play around. So. Okay, mm. I'll just go with O1. Sorry, it's O1. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now it is getting passed as O1 itself, not 204, right? Because we. Yeah. Yeah. O1 again, right? The second program also it's passed it as O1. O1 only. Yeah. Now we have to see data of O1. Right? Yes. It's got only four records. Uh, grouping, we didn't. No. Uh, actually, we have not uploaded the. We have not uploaded the template over there, right? Yeah, yeah. That's why it's not touching. Hard code. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's O1 on, right? Oh. Yes, O1 only. Then, but huh? oh, it's Q1. Q1. Button. That's what. <laughs> But how <laughs> this got? This got it's the data coming in the yeah. Oh, man, strange. Who is that technical consultant? By <laughs> see, huh? it's not accepting. It's not accepting. Strange. Once copy from SQL developer and put it in the parameter once again. PM, you take it. Hmm. Which one? PM. Second. Yeah. Okay. It's coming up perfectly fine. Something with that. Generate report. Report. PM. Yeah, it's coming PM. With that operation name only, they have got something. <laughs> hmm.
okay pm yeah call it so this how we can just pass the parameter based thing okay today i'll try with my uh, i have written a purchase order query right mm -hmm. i will try with this procedure today hmm yeah so go yes, step by step I'll just don't. go go step by step yeah okay i'll go with that okay, okay then so uh, yeah, yeah tomorrow like uh, i have a doubt how to hmm. submit the uh, through plc for uh, executable to be Hmm. Like we are going to application developer and system administrator. Hmm. We are defining executable and program. Hmm. Rather than going to that, through PL SQL we can approach, right? Through PL SQL. Concurrent program. You want to invoke yeah. your thing? Invoking a concurrent yes, program? Yes, yes. That's what we have yeah, done. Right? Register. Registering. But, okay, registering the component. Yeah, we can do that. See, for everything, for whatever the thing which you are doing in the application developer, we have APIs. Now let us say you want to create executable, you want to create a concurrent program, you want to assign your program to request group. Yes, we have the APIs for that. But tomorrow we will do that. Yeah, either way, we can have it. We can consider that. We can discuss that. Yeah, you just tell me the procedure. I'll One more that, thing. Okay? So, are you asking about the FND load, upload, download, or whether you want to register them directly using a PL SQL API? For migration purpose, are you asking or how? What? for uh, yeah even migration also i want to ask both see generally i'll tell you now the thing is adding a request group or maybe creating a concurrent program generally will not follow that logic what we do is we just initially in the development instance we'll just follow the ui approach user interface approach then in the remaining mm -hmm. instance what you do is using fnd load command using fnd mm -hmm. load you'll download the LDTs and then you'll upload the LDTs. okay so now let us say assume that like we have designed five programs five concurrent programs in our development instance now you need to migrate these okay. five concurrent programs to the testing instance these five concurrent programs yes. the migrate to testing instance what do you do do you follow do you register them manually no we'll not register no. them manually what we do is using yes. fnd load we'll download all the relevant LDTs. nothing but for the concurrent program for the request groups that's a two LDTs. Okay. I mean to say for each concurrent, concurrent program, you'll have one LDT, right? So nothing but five con five LDTs for concurrent program. And maybe request group, if they are same, you'll have one request group LDT. Like that. Yeah. Okay, we will be working on that, right? Yeah, generally, this this particular FND load logic will be the last one we generally deal. I mean, once yeah. you finish all this. Last thing, one. Yeah. Because this this not this doesn't require any programmical stuff. I mean to say, just you just need to execute the command. But where you, where do you require programming stuff is nothing but generally when you you want to migrate around 100 objects something like that what we do is we'll design a shell script for that because okay. yeah because you know like manually uploading fnd load is all stuff is very difficult i mean to say we still follow fnd load only what i'm saying is uh let us say you are migrating some set of components and you want to know the logging of that nothing but like a, whether this program got uploaded or not what is the log file of that and all those things so what we do is generally we'll design a migration scripts We'll design a shell script. Okay. Unix shell script using the Unix shell script will be migrating them. We generally, this migration logic is the fi final topic which we discuss. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. So tomorrow, what will be the topic? Better what we follow is the data template approach. Like as of now, yeah, data template. Have, as of now, we have done the two approaches. The first thing is RDF based PL SQL RDF RDF based approach, and the other one is a PL SQL PL SQL based approach. Then next step is yeah. we'll follow the data template approach, designing data model using the data template stuff. Okay. In that you'll find lot number of samples generally. Like uh, yeah, okay, but but I have a yeah. Hmm. I was asking you how to register the executable through PL SQL and uh, program. That's that what I'm asking. That yeah, I understand. That we can discuss also. I'll just try to okay. pick the API and then yeah, I'll update that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Chala. Bye.